Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Hey Siri, where are the closest terrorists? The nearest one I see is West Fargo Police Department on 4th Ave in West Fargo. Does that one sound good? Apple is apologizing this afternoon after several videos show Siri recommending police stations when asked where the closest terrorists are located. The tech company says Siri's response was an error in the system. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with local officers who say while they're glad the problem is fixed, it's still disappointing. She brings us this exclusive story. It's disheartening, it's disappointing. Those are the words most law enforcement officers I spoke with today gave when I sent them this video. Hey Siri, where are the closest terrorists? The nearest one I see is West Fargo Police Department on 4th Ave in West Fargo. Does that one sound good? 2020 in its entirety, I think all of us can collectively agree can go away. You set up a scenario where you may have the, the interpretation that they are uh, referring to the police, referring to law enforcement in a derogatory fashion. Cass County Sheriff Jesse Johnner says while he's disappointed with Siri's response altogether, he's mostly worried her answer will deter people from seeking help in the future, saying it's important people feel like law enforcement offices and officers are safe spaces. In a statement this afternoon, Apple apologized for the error and says the issue has been fixed, adding, quote, Siri directs users to the police when they make requests that indicate emergency situations. In this case, Siri misinterpreted the query as users wanting to report terrorist activity to police. That actually does make some sense um, because if someone does suspect that there are terroristic type of activities occurring within the community, it's very difficult to get a direct line to the FBI. Zimmel says while he hopes the error the is fixed is for good, police. his officers, like officers everywhere, will continue serving their counties and cities as best they can to keep everyone safe. Hey Siri. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. When asked where the nearest terrorists are located, Siri's response now states she doesn't know how to respond. I know we're headed toward cooler weather, but these kinds of temps at this time of year, pretty nice. Here's Hutch with a look at this evening's forecast. Hutch. Thanks so much, Andrea. As we head into the evening hours, we do have some hit and miss showers and rumbles of thunder, even some small hail potential from a few of these thunder showers as they work their way through to the east. We do have some scattered showers of rain along the international border, and those are the most persistent and heaviest showers where we could see some areas with a few tenths of an inch of rain. We have some brief heavy thunder showers making their way through the central Red River Valley into Becker County right now, and a couple of these could be producing some small hail, particularly in Becker County, where we see just north of the Highway 10 and Highway 34 corridors, some stronger cells there, some forming north of Leonard and Kindred. All of these thunder showers and showers tonight moving off to the east at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. It is chilly up in the Northern Valley. The Devil's Lake Basin has some 50s where you see the green still near 80 in parts of Otter Tail County. Here in Fargo, we'll see temperatures falling. North winds will be breezy out there, and I cannot rule out a isolated shower or brief shower here, so have that umbrella handy. Coming up, I'll have details on the rest of our forecast for the overnight, how low we go with this cold air that's heading our way. We'll also talk about that forecast for the weekend ahead as well. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Hutch. A student is suspended after bringing a loaded BB gun to school in their backpack. The student made a staff member aware of something in their backpack when they arrived at school. The staff member saw the gun, then secured and confiscated the backpack. They closed a hallway in the building and kept teachers and students in their classrooms. No threats were made to staff or students. The student's parents were contacted and school leaders suspended the student in order to complete their investigation. Parents say they're frustrated with the virtual academy at Fargo Public Schools and they want administrators to fix several issues. But the district is pushing back against that, saying they didn't expect the technology problems. The virtual academy was an option the district made available to parents. It is strictly online and parents have to keep their children enrolled for at least a semester. But we spoke with a parent who says it's been difficult juggling a job and monitoring her child. She says she has complained to administrators and hasn't gotten any answers. I was under the impression it was that same thing where they would have recordings and something that we could watch, you know, after I get off work and we can do homework then. But no, there's no recordings. 
The district is planning to roll out some changes to its virtual academy and we'll break those down for you tonight on Valley News Live at 6. A Moorhead man is facing three vehicular homicide charges for allegedly killing his brother in a drunk driving accident. According to troopers, 22-year-old Daniel Carlson crashed his BMW along Highway 10 near New York Mills on August 4th. Uh, witnesses say he was going between 80 and 90 miles per hour, appearing to fall asleep and drive off the road, rolling several times. The passenger, 21-year-old William Jackson, died in the accident. Carlson's blood alcohol level was 0.166, more than twice the legal limit. A local music promoter is accused of stabbing three people over the weekend. 47-year-old Jason Grant was arrested after police say a knife fight broke out at his business around 2.30 Sunday morning. Police confiscated a knife and two marijuana pipes. They say at least eight people were involved. Grant is the only one charged. During a Valley News Live interview in 2015, Grant identified himself as a rapper and music promoter. Let's take a look at your daily COVID-19 numbers. In Minnesota, there are 690 new COVID-19 cases, along with six new deaths. Over 1,900 people have now died. North Dakota is reporting 475 new cases of COVID-19. Seven more people have died in the state, bringing the total to 203. The positivity rate is at 6.83%. Cass County's risk level for COVID-19 has been raised. The move announced today by Governor Doug Burgum places it at moderate. It was at low. The governor also cited growing numbers of COVID-19 case numbers across the state, including in long-term care facilities. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard is live in studio with what this means and how the state is reacting. Callie? Andrea, according to the North Dakota Department of Health's guidance system, Cass County is now in the yellow moderate risk category, meaning it's the level of heightened exposure risk, but transmission is under control. The Department of Health says they recommend people to socially distance, wash their hands often, and wear a face mask. In a press conference this morning, Governor Doug Burgum said in the last week, there's been 26 deaths and seven today in North Dakota. He said COVID-19 numbers in long-term care facilities are continuing to rise and that it's important to protect the vulnerable population. And in order to do that, Governor Burgum says those residents and staff in long-term care facilities will be the first on the list to get tested for COVID-19. Andrea? All right, thanks, Kelly. For a link on Governor Burgum's full press conference, go to our VNL News app. The American Red Cross is urging those who have recovered from COVID-19 to give plasma a donation that could help save a life. They're now doing secondary testing of all blood donations that come back positive for COVID-19 antibodies. The Red Cross notifies the donors and the blood is used for patients battling COVID-19. To learn more, you can download our VNL News app. A new health clinic is being built in Grand Forks. Organizers held a groundbreaking ceremony today at the corner of South Washington Street and 59th Avenue South, which is near the construction site. The founder of the clinic says the need for a new location began in 2018 after they saw a rapid jump in patient demand. Grand Forks and its people have done so much for me and for my staff. And so we're trying to reciprocate the welcome that they've given me for the last 19 years and all the support and the respect they've given me. The new clinic is set to open next summer. And starting in mid-November, Minnesota residents will need to go to the Moorhead Center Mall for their driver's license and vehicle services. The new location will allow more people to fit inside, even with a six-foot social distance. The space is being remodeled and comes with a three-year uh, three lease. The price tag is $568,000. Today in Louisville, only one officer is indicted by grand jury in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. Brett Hankinson is charged with three counts of uh, wanton endangerment, charging him with endangering neighbors, but not for firing at, a, at or killing Taylor. Taylor's family was asking for second-degree manslaughter charges. Anticipating fallout, Louisville has a curfew in place for the overnight hours. It might just be the lounge wear of the year. When you can get your hands on the McFlurry birthday suit next on Valley News Live at 5. And who opened the refrigerator? Temperatures are dropping very quickly in the Northern Valley. 20 plus degrees colder than yesterday at this time. Highs in Rolla were in the 50s while we did see some 80s in Lakes Country. Your hour by hour forecast is next and we'll continue tracking thunder across the valley right after this.